Welcome, everyone. Um, today we have a wonderful discussion brought to us um, for Las Vegas Market and Designers Today. Um, we have Jane Dagmy, who is editor in chief of um, Designers Today, as our moderator with our panelists. And it's Designing an Uncommon Life. And so um, just a discussion about design and all the different nuances and different styles that there might be. This is being recorded. If you miss any part of the presentation, you can go back to our website and visit us there and re-see re any part of it. It will also be on our YouTube channel. This also is CEU accredited, so if you, have, if you need that, it will be emailed to you tomorrow as a self-reporting credit. Um, at this time, Jane, I'll turn it to you. Thank you so much, Kim, and thank you to Las Vegas Market for having this panel, for hosting us. I'm really excited to get together this group of extraordinary designers. Um, they are um, female creatives who have built their businesses from the ground up. I have with me today Amy Wertepney Wirte from Project Interiors. Cloda from Cloda Design and Alicia Bailey with Bailey Lee Interiors, who will be called Bailey because that's what she goes with. And I, I call this the like the ABCs of interior design badassery because we have Amy, <laughs> Bailey, and Cloda. And I'm going to briefly introduce them right now in alphabetical order. So um, Chicago native Amy Wartepney has been turning out unapologetic, authentic interiors since establishing her West Town Firm project in 2005, employing her signature aesthetic, an organic glam mashup where luxury is cut with a dose of grit to influence emotion and engage the imagination. Amy's commitment to making a difference extends well beyond interiors. An avid volunteer and mentor in Chicago and abroad, she believes in social outreach and giving back. With a tribe of six captivating women, Project supports programs whose impact will be felt for generations. So Amy, welcome. It's great to Thank see you, you today. Jane. Thank you. Bailey Lee comes next. Based in the Valley Arts District of Orange, New Jersey, Alicia Bailey, Bailey eased her way from real estate to interior design. Fusing her artist mind and designer skills with a fresh and fearless perspective, Bailey creates unified personal spaces that bring out the best in her clients to not only reflect where they're at, but where they're going. In addition to transforming residential and commercial spaces, she has made a reputation for herself through her famous hand-painted wall murals and textures that she envisions and paints herself without any formal training. So Bailey, so good to have you. Hi, thanks Jane. So happy to be here. And now my sea girl, Cloda. Irish-born and New York-based designer Cloda, known for her life-enhancing minimalism and wellness by design tenets, has been ahead of the curve with eco-friendly design since she began her career. Embracing healing modalities, using both ancient and cutting-edge methods to energize and balance space, she was one of the earliest adopters of Feng Shui, incorporating chromotherapy, aromatherapy, ophelia, and the science of light in design. With many licensing product partnerships, ranked on numerous industry lists, and having earned iconic status, Clotus' focus is, and always has been, sustainability, well-being, and comfort. A quote that I excerpt from a video that I found on her um, on your website, Clota, I love what you said here. You said, a home is like a striptease artist and should never reveal itself all at once. So I love that. You, you actually have many quotable um, but that was one that I took. So welcome everybody. And thank you to everybody that's viewing today. All right, let's get down to questions. So um, my first question, we all get that place affects person. With that said, take us back and tell us something about your childhood and upbringing that has made a long lasting impression or impact on your design philosophy. And Cloda, I would love to start with you because you were born the farthest away in Ireland and lived in Oscar Wilde's summer house. So could you tell us a little bit about 
how you're growing up impacts your design? Does, can you all hear me? Yes. Cloda, are you on mute? So I am going to, because we, Jane, this is Kim. I'm not sure that we can hear you right now. Cloda, can you hear? Can you? I hear can me? hear you. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yes, you're back. <laughs> okay, I've done. I've got. I tried to check in three times before I got it. So just, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna step in for Jane for a second, um, as she asked. So and and take over her question for a minute um, that she wanted you to answer first, um, which was. Uh, take us back to your upbringing and tell us something about your childhood, something that made a long lasting impression or impact on your design philosophy. Well, I was born in the West of Ireland um, of generally mobile aristocratic parents. We were really ran wild as children. We had horses and dogs. We lived in Oscar Wilde's country home for a while. Oh. Peacock used to come up the lawn. The colors in the west of Ireland are amazing. And uh, I was imbued with the seasons and stately homes and uh, far too much silver and mahogany. <laughs> and when, when we were down in mobile, so we changed houses four times before I was 16. And I was very glad to see the stuff being sold. <laughs> I didn't have to take care of it anymore. So now I believe in low maintenance and I believe in the use of gentle, beautiful colors, and, and um, I, I believe in no clutter. I believe in letting the body breathe in space and the mind breathe in space without too many good art, of course, but not, but not too much stuff. What you can see that these, that these images is not much stuff. Right. And very often we use walls as art. So I, I, I went 180 degrees from my childhood with all the nostalgia, the good nostalgia has stayed. But otherwise I left, I left all the clutter and pomp pomposity <laughs> further and further behind. Mm -hmm. And then I traveled in Paris and this is, oh, this shot is me in Africa. I, I love horses and I love Africa with kids we look after there. So I was doing a writing, um, the safari, or safari, mm -hmm. and I like to try, I think of being a child, being brought up, sort so of being packed off to boarding school, selling the antiques paid for the, for the boarding school, that I, I always long for freedom, and I never feel freer than when I'm on a, a good horse, and since, so on safari, you feel even freer. Mm -hmm. 
that picture gives me goosebumps of you on the horse on safari. I've been mm -hmm. to Tanzania many times and yeah, there's nothing like being being in, in the bush. No, nothing. <laughs> You're being in Africa, right? So that's incredible. Yeah. Jane, are you back? <laughs> Gorgeous. And looks like she's connecting. Yeah. Is this Bailey's work? This is Projects Work, my firm. Um, this oh. is actually um, a med spa. <laughs> Gorgeous, I love that. Thank you, thank you. We actually started in our client's um, loft, a downtown loft in Chicago, and then she said, I think you guys need to get out here to my, to my, my med spa and uh, chic it up a bit. So this was a really fun project to work on. This is where I'm sitting right now. Oh, that's beautiful. Nice. What a lovely, the brick is beautiful. It's my whole yeah. office for the last five months. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> really beautiful. Oh, so my work's taken me to Tanzania, Nepal, Nicaragua. That was Nepal. That's so funny. Um, very nostalgic. Um, should I go next? Well, I feel like Jane probably wants us to keep the ball rolling for her. Um, I, um, quite a contrast to you, Cloda. I grew up, um, I'm a city girl through and through. No green pastures and riding horses for me. I actually like rode the L <laughs> every <laughs> <year>. <laughs> I took two public buses to high school, and um, I think that, you know, something about my upbringing that really had a positive, or had an effect on uh, my design philosophy is uh, maybe just, first of all, having the courage um, to move around the city on my own. You had to be really courageous and bold to navigate through public transportation and all of that. So for right then and there, I think it gave me an opportunity to really come into uh, my power in that way. Um, I grew up in a two bedroom apartment and uh, I shared one of the bedrooms with two of my sisters. So moving around a bunk bed and a twin bed, um, you know, that was, uh, you know, the, a way that I got really creative. Um, but, I would say what's most affected my design philosophy was um, from my upbringing was how much love and comfort I had at my house. Um, so I feel like one of my superpowers is fostering a sense of community and bringing people together, making them feel welcome um, at our office, in my life, and in our spaces too. So um, approachable, not too precious, um, lots of stories, sentiments and then laughter. So um, that's my personal home base and that's what I try to bring to the table for all of our, all of our projects and to all of our clients' homes and spaces. Oh. Are you going to lead us inside the Airstream? <laughs> <I know. laughs> What's going on in there? I got my I eye on an oh, Airstream at the moment. It, it just depends on what, it depends on what the day is. I mean, sadly we have, we, we did have a huge party in um, on Valentine's night to celebrate our 15 year anniversary. And we were doing goddess card readings in there that night, but you can have a drink, a coffee, a nap. We've had meetings in there. It's been a kissing booth on, on another Valentine party. It's, <laughs> it's everything. It's, we've hosted, you know, some of the girls that work with me, their kids' birthday parties. It's just really a fun, it's loaded with my grandma's, ma um, uh, doilies. Um, as the drapery, and it was fun uh, renovating it with my nephew. Um, so yeah, it's really special. And if you have a six thousand square foot warehouse with tall ceilings, I mean, what? And and six girls, six ladies that work with you, we've got a lot of space. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> Might as well, right? <laughs> oh my God, that sounds amazing! I gotta yeah. check that out. I don't yeah. think I've seen that. One. <laughs> I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back and look at the air screen that's for sale. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that's been a really great um, element of fun and surprise in our studio. We're in a very nondescript building, no sign on the door. Um, looks like a little black st storefront that's, you know, bricked in and has glass block. And uh, you walk in and it's just this big white bright space with a huge skylight and yeah, our camper and camper's name Steffi after my grandma who <laughs> lives here from Poland and it's just fun. It's really, really, really great, energetically great space to be in. Nice. Okay, okay. I guess I'll, I'll jump on and talk a little bit about myself um, in my childhood. So I basically grew up in East Orange, uh, New Jersey. Um, I was not raised by my parents. I was raised by my grandparents. Um, and my grandma, I think, I called her Nana. I think she somehow, you know, put me on to um, my interest in furniture and in home design and decor in her own way. Because I, I remember going shopping with her to uh, search for a sofa. And like every maybe three to five years, she would buy new furniture. And so we, I went with her to get this red velvet sofa and it was a sectional and it was so gorgeous and I couldn't wait for it to get delivered. I went home from school to see it and when it's there, it looks amazing, but she had it wrapped in plastic. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, Nana, no, like why we can't enjoy it, right? So, but for us, um, I think it was about preservation for her. Um, the kids wouldn't mess it up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we just didn't have a whole lot of money. Um, so she was very particular about making sure that, you know, her living room was amazing and if people walked in there, it was going to stay that way forever right. and so, <laughs> until she bought new furniture. So, um, so when I saw that, it kind of broke my heart to see the plastic, uh, <laughs> the plastic wrapped uh, sectional. But um, after that, I was really just into like, oh my God, like beautiful furniture and making a space feel amazing. Because when we walked into this new living room, every time I came home from school and I walked into this new living room, I just felt different. I felt happier. I felt more uplifted. Um, so I knew that it was having an impact on me in a way that I hadn't imagined as a child. Um, so then I think later on in life, it, I started to really start getting into the craftsmanship of furniture and antiques uh, kind of pulled me in. I also realized that as a child, I always was fascinated with people's attics. I was afraid of basements, but I was <laughs> fascinated with attics. <laughs> and it felt like the attics stored some really good stuff. Like that's where people had some amazing things, like artwork or things that they were just like hiding away. Um, but that were older pieces that were valuables. Um, and so I, whenever I had the chance, I was in someone's, my aunt's attic or someone's attic when I would go over their houses and I was just fascinated. Like if you see like the antique frame behind me, just the detail, I absolutely loved it. And then I just was very interested in figuring out how to have that same beautiful craftsmanship current day, modern day, but with a refresh, right? So I would get beautiful antique chairs, I would find them, and then I'd either do them over myself, I taught myself how to reupholster, or I'd get someone, I'd collaborate with an artist and I'd make something really unusual, like graffiti chairs. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'd have an artist like paint on, you know, leather skins and, um, and do graffiti on them and then, but it'd be this bergier, this antique bergier. And they became almost like installations for people. Um, people asked me to start exhibiting uh, my furniture pieces because everything was such a statement. And that put me into the art world. And I was like, this is an amazing kind of hybrid space to exist. Um, one day I decided um, that, you know, design or decoration just wasn't enough. And I'm like, I wanna do something more and I started hand painting walls. I got up one day and I just did it. And I just loved working with the paints. It just put me in such a zone, the metallic paints and combining colors and textures and then creating this amazing wall. 
um, that when the light hits it at certain types of times of day, it has a different effect than it did at night. And um, I just loved it. And I just keep exploring that artistic side of myself. Um, and I do infuse antiques, um, but I do, in, you know, bring in modern elements as well. So it's like this eclectic blend. Mm -hmm. And I, my clients are my muse, you know, they are the people that inspire me. So when I'm doing a space for them, it is their personality that you're seeing uh, on that, you know, on that, in that space. So that's that <laughs> for me, I think for now. Um, thanks for the throwback to the um, the plastic covered furniture. Yes, My grandma right? got the same. <laughs> it's like, what Just is going, going on? Sure. <laughs> okay. Have we lost you? I think um, Jane's trying to get back on. Um... So when did you guys start a business? You said you've been in, you had an anniversary, right, Emma? 15, 15 years ago. It's just, um, I don't know where the years have gone, but yeah, 15 years and, um, it's been a wild ride. It's been wonderful and hard and beautiful and all of the things. <laughs> um, who would have thought this 2020 would have been, you know, I thought that, you know, my team and I would be on an epic trip somewhere yeah. this year, but, uh, you know, they both uh, have really great backyards with big, you know, like forested areas. So we were talking this morning, maybe we need to start doing some like, you know, some bonfire parties together. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> I'm putting in a fire bowl. I've got a guitarist who lives next door. My husband sings. Oh, so, you know, oh, it's... Uh, and, and of course, in the middle of moving into this new house, a giant 100-foot tall tree fell right across two properties and smashed my deck. So I'm in repair mode, too. <laughs> oh, no. A lot going on. We've had some really nasty storms in the north. It's funny that you guys talk about like a, a gathering of such because I I hosted a courtyard concert. Um, I live in an artist community and there are an amazing artists um, that live here aside from myself. And so we were all kind of quarantined together during COVID, but it, it, it resulted in us really just putting our creative hats on and doing really cool stuff together. And so we, one of my friends is a neighbor and he was, is a furniture builder. He built a swing suite right in front of my studio. And then I hosted a concert at the swing suite <laughs> for everyone in the courtyard. So it was a really beautiful thing. We just had blankets and pillows on the lawn. And I had friends that sing and they came and they performed and it was intimate, but it was so needed during these times. And we really enjoyed that. Jane, the silence again. No. Yeah. Can you hear silent. me? Can anybody hear Jane? No. No. Oh. I was just going to say design's about community, you know, it's about the, yeah. we, we've got the loneliness project, you know, people are, are sad and lonely. And we, I think design creates a place where people can get together and communicate, make music, okay. dance, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right. And collaborate. It's just a beautiful thing. when Exactly. You know, exactly. Yeah. I've been cooking my head off. Um, I, I mean, I love to cook anyway, but yeah, 21 meals a week, <laughs> talk about creativity. That's incredible. Nice. And it was funny, I went into New York yesterday for a site visit and I had lunch out. It was like, you know, travel. <laughs> How yeah. far away from the city are you now? I'm an hour and a quarter by car. Okay. So I've only been in a few times. We decided to... Um, we decided to, to go into really t at, into isolation. Although my son lives up the road with his little girls, 
and he's put in an organic garden and there's seven hens. <laughs> so there's a lot of nice things happening. I think people are exploring sides of themselves proactively than never, you know, because we're, we're so reactive. I am anyway in my normal day. I'm so busy that uh, I don't have time to let my mind roam except when I'm in an air. Clodagh, we lost you. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. It's everybody's, is it the Wi-Fi? <laughs> What's going on with so everyone? It's, it's almost like we have like a maximum. <laughs> one person gets on, one's off. Right, that's true. Maybe it's like, and now, just two at a time. <laughs> Bailey, can, Bailey and Amy, can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Okay. It's, I feel like I'm in an alternate universe. And I am like, I mean, this is just, uh, well, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting. And thank you, everybody, for <laughs> hanging in there. Um, I've missed a bunch, but you've carried on. I think we actually have one person too many that dialed in on the panelist, and that's what keeps kicking us off. Um, so I, we're going to figure this out. Um, and hopefully Cloda will come back in, in a moment. But can I say, can I start a question off that I don't think you got to? And I, can you all Absolutely. hear me still? Yeah, okay. we can hear you. Okay. Um, I know that each of you is very, uh, you have your own way of getting to your clients. You know, you deliver a client experience that begins with the interview process. And um, so I wanted to hear a little bit about how you get close to your clients, what that sort of secret recipe is, um, which enables you to get and do amazing projects. And Amy, I, you once told me in an, when I interviewed you back in October of last year, you said, I know every girl who works with me on a deep level, and this is how our relationships are with our clients. And so I just wanted you to start a little bit about that, how you get close. Um, well, I think that, um, you know, it states very boldly on our website and our bio that, you know, this isn't biz this isn't just business, it's personal, uh, which is so true. I mean, we all know, especially with residential design, you're, you're in people's homes, you're in their business, you're holding their babies, you're sometimes, you know, in the middle of some marital bickering and... <laughs> big decisions are being made and all of that. So yeah, I mean, it is really important to establish that baseline of, I think, trust um, and connection. And I think that the most important thing um, that I've learned just thinking back on knowing when there wasn't that connection and not like truly listening and honoring that um, so 15 years in the business, I feel like we've established some sort of, I want to say it's at an energetic level because mm. um, what we're putting out in the world, what we're, what we're authentically doing and be and how we are through our work, through all of the work that we do, I feel like is bringing in the person that we want to work with, if that makes sense. So Right. Um, even just in the last few months when we had some scary times, like, you know, we had projects put on hold. We had, you know, a series, a handful of weeks where we didn't have, we just were having a hard time. And I know the whole world was shutting down. But something that I took from that experience with some of the new projects that came in that I could just personally say spoke to me was, having three people tell me, I love your energy. I don't know you. I know you through Instagram or the things I've read or the things I've seen. And we want a part of, we want that in our process. And so, um, honestly, that opened up a dialogue to start talking about all kinds of things other than even the project, you know, we're talking about family and purpose and travel and, you know, um, I don't know, just connecting on a deeper level right away. I feel like just really, I mean, we're asking the common, we're asking the common questions. You know, we, 
um, don't have an official questionnaire, there's something that's pretty basic that's on our website that, you know, asks people about their vibe and what projects of ours they've resonated with and so forth. Um, we talk to people about if they're, you know, pulling um, samples of, you know, tearing out magazine images, do they have a stash of like things that they're drawn to or love, things they like or don't like. Those are sort of the things um, that we're asking. Right. Ultimately, it's just like a human connection. And I can say probably about 70% of the work that we have in our studio right now, um, it's repeat business. And it's happening now. Our clients are starting to like escape and have places in other parts of the country and even outside of the country. And that's been really great. So I don't know, I guess it's just getting to know someone on a deeper level, really hearing them, pushing their boundaries, helping them tell the story of their home through the design process and holding their hand along and being there along for the ride. Right. Um, yeah, so being collaborative. No. Um, Bailey, Bailey, we talked yesterday about your, the way that you do this. Oh, Claude is back, yay. Cloda, can you hear? Amy, Cloda left. I can hear. I, I know what the, I just want to say, I know what the, I know what the mishap is and we're going to remedy it in a second. And it's, um, I had shared my login information, just saying with Cloda, because yeah. she, she, she hadn't gotten, she had not gotten it yet last night. Oh. And I, and I forgot that it was one like very, um, so I have to, I'm going to just send Kim, um, an email so she can send it again. But that is the trouble that we're having because there's two Janes right now. So um, we'll get this fixed. But Bailey, can you talk a little bit about how you get close to your clients? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you and I were discussing a story of kind of how I got dragged back into um, interior design because I was in corporate America for years. And then at one point I was like, I don't want to, you know, design, you know, so I went back into corporate America and I had this client that basically stalked me and she's like, no, I must have you as my designer because, you know, you're going to change my life. And I'm like, what, you know, what are you talking about? So I finally met with her after three months of her approaching me and I'm like, I'm in corporate America. I'm fine. I don't want to do this. But I sat down with her and we basically ended that meeting in tears because here this was a woman who um, was highly successful at the time and um, was like the lead attorney of a pharmaceutical company and she had just gotten like the the life of her dreams she thought right her her dream home her daughter her husband and then things went left like completely just fell apart and um, and she needed to restart her life and she sought me out to help her do this and she kept approaching it like no you know this is going to um this is going to i need you to help me get my life back in other words and once i talked to her and and, and heard about the pain and the struggle that she was going through and the hurt i realized that yeah you know this really does that's what design is like we're changing and impacting people's lives in a way that we can't even imagine and so it is important for us to really get to know our clients, our, their lives, their lifestyles, the things that they have been through. Um, this woman had come from very humble beginnings and was now very successful, but she was going through something really hard in her life, uh, a divorce and all of that. And so she just wanted to feel good. I just want my home to represent who I am and I want to feel amazing and I want my daughter to feel amazing when we're in here. And so for me, that led me to this, to this idea of like what you said, Amy, like we're getting to really know people on a deeper level that um, I even say, I have this joke that I say where I'm like, where if, if you become my client, it's kind of like we go together. We're in a relationship, <laughs> whether you're a male or a female or a couple, we go together. Like we need communication and trust and we need to really get to know each other. We, we need to know, you know, what we've been through where we're heading um, and we need our environments to represent that and to create spaces for people to actually grow and expand as people. Right. So it's not just limited to where you are right now, but where are you heading in your life? And so your spaces want to, you know, 
represent that for you as well. You said you said yesterday that um, that you have a friend who's a psychologist. Yes. And so, sometimes you just uh, what do you what would you like just you know talk to her about or him about? Yeah. So I have a best friend, um, Dr. Cass. Um, she's a psychologist. So sometimes I do go through a series of questions with my clients and I hang out with them, but I, but for some reason they're very blocked. Um, you don't really get to know like truly who they are. And sometimes they don't know. They're just like, I like everything or, you know what I mean? They, 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 they don't understand that it's really important to, to nail down and drill down on the things that inspire them, that make them feel happy and uplifted. Mm -hmm. And when I have that client that doesn't know and is very indecisive or ambivalent, I do have a friend <laughs> who's a psychologist and she helped me form, formulate some questions and some things with that, that can actually break down some of those barriers. They're very general questions, right. but they're deeper mm -hmm. and they, people get to like really express because it because sometimes people just don't know how to well, say it in certain words right we, we know that we know that designers are shrinks too but you know yeah. but we're not like <laughs> official we're not official sh shrinks and of course i always say we like i'm i'm you know i want to be i want to be a designer anyway um i i am i wanted cloda to be on for this if um, she got a new login so you, can, can you hear me yes yes <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. i don't know what happened you've been going in and out Cloda, I know what happened. I we were sharing a login. I didn't realize that we all had our personal logins, but we're good now. Okay, because I'm my my face is by Jane. <laughs> okay, <laughs> on my well, screen it doesn't say Cloda, it says Jane. <laughs> okay, we'll try and fix that. But I, we can hear you, and that's the most that's the 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 best thing. So you can hear me, right? I can hear you very well. Okay, sorry about that. It's okay. Um, we were just talking about getting to know our clients and um, sort of that, that process um, and giving the client the experience of, of Cloda before you even touch their space. And I know I heard um, in one interview of yours about uh, that you ask about horoscopes and things. So I just would love to know about your process, how you get to know your client deeply. Well, we, I, I work with the four C's. Once I've got their horoscope and I've figured out what I might expect, uh, and some of the corporate people are like a uh, little taken aback that I should ask their horoscope to put it mildly, but they give it mm -hmm. anyway. And they start to loosen up a bit, like our studio, studio is a hugging studio when you could have actually hugged. Mm -hmm. And the corporate types would come in very uptight and, and you give them big hugs and you could see them kind of look, look reel back a little bit and then come forward and start to open up. Um, I get the horoscope and I work with the four C's as my first book, which is Contemplate, Cleanse, Clarify, Create. So I sit my clients down, um, I interview them singly and also together. If it's a family or an office, I interview everybody, but I do interview them separately as well because people are less constrained if they're stating their wants um, one to one. And contemplate is uh, to contemplate where you were, where you are now, and where you want to go. And then cleanse is get rid of all, uh, get rid of get, get rid of everything, preconceived ideas. You know, just just cleanse yourself so you're open. And that includes cleansing your home, walking into your closets and your clients' mind when I'm interviewing them. And they usually go pale when I talk about their closets, or if I want to open their kitchen cabinets because a lot of people are clutter bugs and there's a lot of stagnation in their homes. So I try to get rid of that with the cleanse. It's like if you had a dining room that you table that's beautiful, but you, you score the dining room table in a lousy divorce. That means you're sitting at a lousy divorce every time you have a meal on that table, because mm -hmm. there is no such thing as an inanimate object. I believe, and you know, in the, when, I, when I'm traveling, I go all around the world. And uh, I, so many, so many communities and cultures believe that, that there is no such thing as an inanimate object. An object speaks to you, it holds memories. So after the cleanse is done, uh, you start creating. And I, I encourage people to make two lists, um, must have, possibly, and wish list. 
And I suggest that they jump from must have to wish list because if you have time to look, think about it, if you really want something or not, you probably don't want it at all. You're probably trying to sell yourself something or sell yourself something your mother told you you should have or something. It's right. Do you think just, then, you, then we go on and we create? And the beautiful thing about design is it helps people to find, to find their true selves mm -hmm. because the place has to be supportive, environmental, all those good things. And um, they're part of the choosing process. They can't avoid that. Mm -hmm. And I've, you know, I've, I've helped people to, um, when we do art consulting, we help people to choose art because they, they never kind of dared to before. Because people are a bit worried that designers might look down on them because their taste was so-so. But I mm -hmm. find if I'm working with somebody for a little while that their true taste comes out. And very often I go into a showroom or an art gallery and I say nothing. I just say, why don't you just wander around, you know, see what you feel like, what, what speaks to you. And, and almost invariably they choose something I would have chosen. I don't know what it is, if it's an energy thing. And we, we become very good friends. My first job in New York, actually, I, I did a lot of work in Spain because I changed husbands' countries and careers some time back <laughs> and left fashion to go into, <laughs> to go into design. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, you know, the first guy I met in New York, I met this wonderful guy and his wife. They had a, a vineyard in the Napa Valley and that I, I was recommended, God knows why, because I've had no, I've had no um, formal training whatsoever, really, a few classes and stuff like that. But anyway, Michael said to me, show me your portfolio. And I said, I never show my portfolio, which was truth and a lie in a sense, because I didn't have one to show. So, <laughs> <laughs> And then he looked at me and he said, well, come and have dinner with me and my wife, because you can sit down and have a good conversation around a table and have a glass of wine, then the chances are that the relationship will continue. And uh, I went to dinner and it continued. <laughs> that, that was in New York or Spain? That was New York. New York. But what's the last C um, after create? What's the final C? Contemplate, cleanse, clarify, or make your oh, list. Clarify. Yeah, yeah. And so then create. The four Cs. Okay. Now we have to add to that comfort, color, and cash, and very ah. many other things. <laughs> but let's like get the that. basics right, you know. Yes, yes. And also, I wow. won't I won't specify furniture unless my, my one of my studio team has sat at it on it, and my clients ideally have to have to go and do the sit test too, because if, if a home is not comfortable, it's useless. Right, right. As I say, I, I spent my childhood sitting in upright Queen Anne chairs, you know, as a polished mahogany table. <laughs> the food on wasn't great because we were getting poorer and poorer, but <laughs> but everybody was full, of, full of, of, you know, what's okay, what's not okay. And I'm not full of what's not okay. Everything's okay if it's in the right place. Mm hmm I, I love that about the sit test. Amy, Amy and Bailey, do you, do you always try out um, upholstery and or have your clients do that we do especially when we have things um, custom upholstered um, our upholster has a series of different cushion styles and yeah we, we absolutely bring them in for that um, yeah and we'd be Same surprised here. some some people aren't really interested but others really get into it so even just like, seeing the behind the scenes you know uh, the shop is yeah, I, I make them actually do as well, not just the sit test, but the flop test that you stand with your back to the sofa and you let yourself drop onto it. Oh. Yeah. So if there's bad upholstery or some of the framing is, is not properly covered, <laughs> you get very sore yeah. backside. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but we flop test first for them. We go and we flop and we say, this is what you do. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, totally. there are certain, there are definitely certain pieces that I feel are important, like the couch, the sofa, and, you know, the lounging chair and different things like that. So I absolutely want my clients to test them out first. I had a client ask me to, to pick out her mattress and I was like, no, I can't, <laughs> you know, a mattress, like that's your comfort level. Like you have to sleep on that. So you need to know what's firm and what, you know what I mean? So I don't, you have to be there for that. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't agree at all. I think sleep is the most important thing. 
Yeah. That we're all losing and not getting enough of. And so I, I make my clients go to the mattress and lie on it. Yes, you <laughs> have to. Yeah. Or if I know a really good mattress, I'll, you know, I'll recommend it. And, and but because I've tried it myself. Because yeah. people should spend more money on their bed than they do on many other things. Absolutely. The bed works hard eight hours a night, right? Or seven hours or six hours, depending. Mm -hmm. And the people, people say, well, I'll just get a mattress myself. I said, no. <laughs> no. Know what well, you're doing. <laughs> that, yeah, you um, have to know what you're doing. You have to test it out. Totally. I was thinking just one thing I always love to ask people that are very busy and creative, uh, like the three of you, and I think the bed is the perfect segue. What, how, what's your like, self-care regimen or how do you bring wellness about do you, you know, into your daily or several times a week life? Where do you rank self-care? Let's start with Amy. Oh man. Well, if you would have asked me this like six months ago, my answer would have been very different. I feel like I'm not the person coming out of quarantine with a six pack. Um, <laughs> I, uh, you know, that, um, that groove is very fragile and, um, you know, I, I used to do a ton of yoga and, um, I've been, I've been trying, it's not the same at home. Um, but, um, as simple as it sounds for me, especially since, you know, I've been home, um, it's just been practicing gratitude and it's so powerful. Um, I mean, I, I do have a Peloton bike. I, I have been, you know, cycling and I have meditation apps and things like that. But I think that ultimately, um, I thought that I would be doing so much more than what I actually am. Um, but I actually feel really happy. And I think it's because of that gratitude, like for everything, for every person in my life, for the conversations that we're having, um, for the quality time that we're having together when we can have it, mm -hmm. um, just for being able to like be in my home and, and not wonder where my next meal is coming from. Honestly, um, I have this really great journal that a friend of mine got me. It's called Fucking Brilliant, One Line a Day. <laughs> it's like a little gratitude journal. Um, and so I try when I can, you just like one little thing every day. Um, and that's been really great too. And I thought, I'm going to look back at this time and I'll get back into my groove. I, mm -hmm. I just slowly am. But I just want to be, you know, honest to just say, like, I, I, I'm feeling a little out of line, uh, mm -hmm. but, but on track at the same time, if that makes sense. Right. Well, I, yeah, no, it does. And, you know, gratitude, I think forgiveness is something that's very hard, especially when, um, for people that, uh, like, I think creatives are always thinking, you know, I've got to, I've got to do better. I've got to do this. I'm not doing enough. I'm like, you know, so a little, a little slack, a little slack, you know? Uh, and honestly, just, you know, with some of the work that, that I, and the, the connections and the work that I'm doing in Tanzania, you know, like they're, they've got real problems, you know? So right. truly just being able to like, just focus on, um, on the positive. Yes. It's, it's not always easy, but it's really transformative when you can do it. Yes. Bailey, what's your, um, tell me a little bit about your self-care or a ritual that helps you sort of get aligned. I actually do a daily head blessing ritual mm -hmm. um, where I take essential oils and, you know, and water and I mix them together and I do this whole head blessing. I do that daily. I also get together with one of my close friends um, and we do what we call spirit circle and we bless our chakras and we make sure that we're setting our intentions for the week or for the day. Um, it's just really important for me because I am dealing with a lot of different energies. Um, I'm working with a lot of different people, um, not just clients, but even just contractors and everyone else. And so, mm -hmm. you know, and then you have your family stuff, you're a real person. So you have all your other stuff. So you just want to make sure I, for me, I just need to make sure that I am clear and centered and that my intentions are, you know, set and good and that I can start my day um, with good energy, with a, with, with a happy feeling and um, optimism. 
always. Mm, optimism always. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sounds good. Chloe, what's your <laughs> That's Chloe, what's your what's your routine like? What's what my week been like? Your your routine. What's oh, my your, routine? Yeah. It's, uh, oh, I I I taught myself to um, get out of bed as fast as I can in the morning, char, get myself ready, mix my I mix my own essential oils every day. And um, so that it, when I when I start work, at that time, I'm, I'm I'm as ready as I'd be in the office, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all they're treating your home office like you have to go out and go into something different, you know. And right. I go for walking meditations. I find it very hard to sit still in COVID, but to, to sit on a cushion. So I go for walking meditations, and. Um, one of my best things to do, actually, I love to cook. So I put on the music from the country whose dish for, from which the dish comes from. Uh, that, that's terrible English, but <laughs> so it's, if it's if it's Brazil, I have samba going while I'm cooking and I'm dancing in the kitchen, and I find that's a great release. The dancing is terrific. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, lots of things actually. Not like and we we have a philanthropic cause. Many of them actually, but one in particular in Africa. And we're mad. I'm thinking also when I get up, how can we fundraise? Where can we find somebody to no, donate something today? <laughs> Positive thinking. Yes. And yes. I I, I, I started um, art consulting a year and a half ago, but also I had my first photography exhibition a year and a half ago, which is probably the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. Because usually you have a team, you know? <laughs> but when you open an exhibition and people are coming in, it's you. <laughs> a solo I, performance. So I've been, I've been taking lots of photos and getting a new exhibition together. And that also is very harmonic for me. It's very meditational. Many, yeah, many I, things. But I have a very shallow side. I think the best thing I did for myself was I had a pedicure the other day. (laughs) First one to five months. I thought, oh, my God. (laughs) Well, you know, getting touched is like, you know, besides the people that you're living with, you don't really get touched by many people anymore. So that's, that's, I, I, um, Again, it's like I'm trying to catch up lost time. But I know everybody, all, all of you are very deeply involved in, uh, philanthropy and community. And um, Amy and um, Clota, you've mentioned just a little bit about your your causes, uh, but I'd love you to just, I know you're, you're working on educating communities. Can you just briefly tell us about what they are and, and what it does? Well, my main squeeze in this is uh, our Samburu tribe in Northern Kenya. Uh, and we're, we're helping to educate uh, a, nomadic, a pastoral nomadic crime. It's very hard for them to get educated because the little kids just have uh, chalkboards on the, under the nearest largest thorn tree. And after that, you know, after that, they go back to tending the cattle and so on and so forth. So we've now got, I think, 1,500 kids. And we have, we have uh, after 20 years almost, we have uh, kids. The parents are, the parents are all illiterate. Basically, most of them are illiterate. Now we have kids that are environmentalists, nurses, you know, they're doing, um, they're electricians, mm. they're, you know, and, they, and some of them have gone back to the tribe to teach. Mm. So it's, um, it's, it's a lovely circle. They're beautiful people. They call them the butterfly people. Mm-hmm. In fact, I'm wearing, I'm wearing their bracelets today. <laughs> beautiful so, beaded bracelets. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. I've got my Maasai earrings on too. <laughs> Oh, you've got Maasai earrings. I love the Maasai too. I love their dancing circles. Have you been to have been to Maasai Mara? Um, yes. Yeah, beautiful. My yeah. first, um, my big life changing moment um, was helping fundraise to build a school um, outside of Arusha in Tanzania near Mount Kilimanjaro, and that was uh, probably about thirteen or fourteen years ago, and so. Fast forward, I mean, I've just stayed committed to this. And um, like you, I'm seeing these kids who are orphans. Um, We've put them through school and um, university and 10% of girls have an opportunity to be educated. 
And so to see, you know, some of my girls who are coming out on top with like finance degrees, I mean, granted getting work there is another story, um, but that really sparked um, something in me that I was just like, life will never be the same after this. So mm -hmm. I feel like my heart and soul lives in East Africa. I don't know if you feel that way too, Cloda. I'm, 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 I feel my heart and soul is kind of everywhere and I try to embrace everything and everywhere. I've traveled so much and seen so much, but, but I have to tell you that when uh, we, we managed to sponsor the first girls dorm, because I said that they couldn't go into secondary education because the tribe kept move, moving on. Um, I, I'm everybody, when I went there for the opening, it was the most astounding moment. It's, it's almost, you, 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 when you see the joy and, and it, at $20 in Kenya, so that, as you know, it's a multiple of 20 practically, you know, mm. that how little, how little money really it takes to, to do this. And we have wonderful sponsors for the kids, for the, for the, stu for the stu students who are going to college. And that's and interestingly enough, it's in, in, the, um, in our fr friends and vendors and so on and so forth, we've had some wonderful, generous people. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's that red thread around the world that, that embraces the whole world. It's all together. Yeah, and, then, and do, then do as you can. For me, it takes up a, a fair amount of time. And um, it just feels very, very, feel very good. And then we, we work also with uh, City Meals on Wheels here and stuff like that that brings meals to the homeless. And it never makes you feel bad. I, I mean, being philanthropic is, is actually being philanthropic towards yourself because you get this glow when you see somebody being better because of you, that you've le left somebody in a better state. I mean, what better yeah. gift is there actually? And that's what design does too. Uh, you know, I've had people cry. You know, mm. oh, you, you, you've changed. You, you've changed my life. You've changed our family life. You know, that's what we do as designers. We yeah. change the office life. We create a community safe spaces. And hotels even now they're 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 calling back of house heart of house. Isn't that lovely? Heart of house? <laughs> the heart of house is no oh, the longer heart of the house. back of house is no longer the back of house is the heart mm -hmm. of house. Mm -hmm. oh, that sounds good. Yeah, I, I think that, I, and I know um, with philanthropy, Amy, you've said before that, you know, not only um, like people come to you or and are interested, you know, clients are attracted to that sense of of, of giving and purpose that you share. I want to I want to um, get to Bailey. Um, before we have to sign off, but um, Bailey, you do a lot of, um, Bailey's really tapped into her local art community and like loves the whole female empowerment. Um, are you, Bailey, are you there? Yes, I'm you here. Come on and talk yeah. about some of the things. I mean, you know, you've, you've donated your time to causes, but I'd love to just talk about your sort of your female empowerment, um, like get that message out. <laughs> yes, um, it's been important for me as an African American woman growing up here in America and just not having a lot of uh, resources and support and different things like that. And so for me, it is, it's just in seeing other women like me and like Cloda said, you know, you can set out to inspire a million people, but if you just start with one, if you just start, you know, yeah. really just uplifting one person and then that has this ripple effect where you end up uplifting so many more just by your actions or by your message in that moment and so it's been art for me um i like i said i i entered into the art realm by being um, invited to do installations and exhibitions with other artists that i've collaborated with and most recently i did um an exhibition called the Femin 3D exhibition where I was the installation artist along with a fashion designer. And the messages there were definitely about woman em women empowerment. Um, I had a chair installation where each chair represented, a, a, you know, a single woman, but they're all bonded together and they, they make up the skirt of this one female, one woman. And it's talking about how if we come together as, as women and we support one another, the power that we have to uplift so many more. 
And, um, and then there was the vaginas are lit. <laughs> I did um, an installation called vaginas are lit. Um, where it was experiential. People could actually walk up and turn the vaginas on and off. They were made of light switch plates, antique light switch plates, and um, we, we created silhouettes, um, body female silhouettes, and then people could turn the vaginas on and off. Whoopi Goldberg came in, saw those, and bought them. And so that was the first time I had sold art on canvas, and that was amazing. And then I did Housing Works Design on a Dime, where I, donate, I dedicated it, uh, and my whole entire vignette, right, was for the AIDS, but it was dedicated to my father who, who passed away of AIDS. Um, and just people coming in um, and seeing that vignette, which was dedicated to him, and it was about being a lover and a fighter, um, loving, but also having to struggle and fight through life. But, you know, people seeing the beauty in that struggle and then letting that struggle then turn around and, you know, affect change for other people. And so those are some of the things that I've been doing. My walls also, a lot of people don't know, my textured walls that I do all have messages underneath. Um, you may not know that they're there, I write and inscribe certain messages on them depending on, you know, if it's in my space or if it's for a client. My wall in my space says you are not alone. People don't know that, but I look at that and I see that and I know I'm not alone in this world. And there are mm -hmm. people that love me and support me and that my mission and my purpose here in life is being served just by, you know, me smiling or helping someone through design, uplifting them and making change in their lives. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love that. I mean, that those secret messages and like, so I want to, I want to go off of that and, and ask Amy and Cloda in your designs, you know, cause to me, that's like what makes, that's some one element that makes Bailey's designs uncommon, you know, that, that those messages. Um, and when I look at the spaces that you all create, it's like, they're so special. I mean, there's so much intention and, and can you just talk a little bit about what in your designs, what that element might be? also be like that those uncommon touches or materials or textures well it goes deeper than that we work with uh, i have a toolbox of uh, modalities that i work with i have a feng shui master i have a biogeometrist i have chromotherapy we've 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 sound we've sound people to acoustical engineers and stuff like that we work with so in a sense, we're making the invisible tangible is the best way I can put it. But you, you, you don't know why you feel good, but there's a zillions of elements and even resonant uh, symbols and stuff like that, that that will make you feel good. Even if mm -hmm. you don't believe in feng shui or anything like that, you can't, you, know, you, can't, you, can't put a, you can't put a barrier up and say, I don't feel good here. <laughs> So it, so it's as, as it's sight, touch, taste, smell, you know, everything, everything is brought in, whether it's the sound of a footstep in the corridor, if it's, is it too bright, should we damp down the noise a little bit in the spa, do you know what I mean? We're thinking the whole time of the whole body, we're thinking very holistically, and yes. I, I think that's what makes our spaces special. And, and also Jane, if I can just, what people's oh. ambitions are, you know. Yeah. And try to try. I could liken myself to a travel guide in a sense. You know, I, you're going to a new country when you come to a designer, and, and and so I'm a travel guide. But also, if you're a good travel guide, you lead that person to places they never thought of going to. Mm -hmm. So as they gradually open up, you bring oh, them to that. more interesting spaces. That's a beautiful analogy. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Bailey, were you going to say something? Oh yeah, I was going to say that. Um, just um, speaking off of what Cloda just said, I came across something called the art or the, the science of neuroaesthetics, which speaks exactly to how our environments and how beauty and how smell and things really just, you know, have the ability to impact us. And so if we think for a second that the things that are seeping into our subconscious minds are not affecting us, then we're remiss because it mm -hmm. truly is, whether we want to believe it or not. And so it's best for us to make, you know, to expose ourselves to things that make us feel really good versus the opposite. So 100%, I agree. Yes. Amy? Um, well, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, we're just 
we're always trying to break the rules <laughs> and create an experience and, you know, had just um, have this element of surprise um, in, in the spaces that we design so that people, um, A, feel comfortable and, um, you know, are resonating with their environment, but also just have a little fun at the, at the same time. So um, we're always looking to use things in different ways. Um, you know, things that are meant to be on the floor might end up on a wall or, you know, we might just put a six foot wide swing in the middle of your living room or, <laughs> um, you know, creating, you know, just really an experiential ways um, of, of being in a space. Um, we once yeah. had a client with a mud room and we added a fire pole and then we did wall covering in there that was a collage of all these different Instagram photos. And so just, you know, sort of helping, helping our clients tell a story, their story. We're coaching them through it. I think similar to what you were talking about, Cloda, with the yeah. being a travel agent, you're just kind of like a vessel to, you know, helping people sort of come into their own. And you're, grant, like a, you're like a flow through vessel. For sure. Yeah, um, exactly. And, you know, you're holding space for them sometimes when, you, when they need it. You're just being their person, you know, building a custom home. Um, your forever home in some cases people are seeing this as um, it's a big deal and it could be a very scary process so I don't know it's just um, you know we try to have we try to have fun with it yeah I mean I think that anybody who hires any one of you and, and this goes for you know many many designers like how lucky are they I mean what a beautiful um, service um you you provide and you know friendship and guidance i mean there's just i don't know it's so good i i want everybody to understand like what a, a great designer does you know like all those people who think it's, you just buy stuff life. <laughs> like to have your client in tears like that is just like the ultimate it, don't say thank yes. you like that is just enough and um one of the things i wanted to also mention is just you know surrounding everyone says surround yourself with the things that you love right but like when you truly think about what those things are you know we've made pillows out of a vintage dress we've um you know like brought in very sentimental things that people had sort of hiding in those closets <laughs> um that we brought out um again pillows made out of a fur coat or um I don't know. We're just always looking for ways to bring things that are sentimental that actually mean something to someone in the forefront. We actually displayed some saris um, on the, a dining room wall of one of our clients, and those were her mom's Beautiful. who had passed away. And it was just like something. She's like, every time I walk into my home, that's exact. That's what I see, and that means so much to me. And I never knew what I could, what I would do with these. So. Um, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of a mushy kind of gal, but I, <laughs> I, like I get into that so much. And now I'm going to start my new, my new uh, potion essential oil. Bailey, I'm going to channel you yes. because okay. I'm a big potion girl too, but I never thought like I'm constantly putting them on and spraying and all of that, but to make it like an actual ritual. I love that. Thank you for yes. sharing that. I just, I just designed a, a clinic for medical marijuana. We, we opened it last week. So <laughs> I've got a lot of rubbing oils. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's very, where very, is that? very interesting. It's really interesting. What, where what, is the clinic? It's on 58th Street. It's called Etain, E-T-A-I-N. And um, you have to have a prescription for, for the pharmacist. And there's, but there's other stuff made of, of juice and stuff like that that's that front, you know, but um, it's, uh, it's really nice to see people coming in and their faces changing because like, the, like that clinic that you showed us, you, you know, with the lovely chairs and everything like that, it's, it's, it's a pretty place to come into, nothing medical looking about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's cool how times have changed spaces. I mean, you know, there wouldn't have been a medical marijuana clinic uh, a couple, several years ago, perhaps. But and then, you know, with respect to COVID, um, who knows what sorts of spaces or how we'll be adapting spaces. Has anybody been asked to um, 
this is going to be our last question because I know I'm, we're going, I feel like over time with Bill Maher. Um, has anybody <laughs> been asked to do some interesting, you know, pandemically minded uh, changes or interiors? Anything coming up? I didn't, oh, go ahead. Uh, well, we've had so many clients come back and say, hey, remember that outdoor space we didn't get to? Or remember when we didn't like go all the way with our, for, I mean, people are living outside at least, I mean, especially in Chicago, we don't get that much time um, of the year where we can actually comfortably be outside. So I think like uh, really seeing the home as a place where you are living, it's not a touching base. Um, space anymore. So creating sanctuaries in general, whether it be outside, whether it be in the kitchen, whether it be we have families who have all sorts of, you know, breakout spaces. We have a client who said, oh my God, when you put that table and chair in the middle of my, my bedroom, I had no idea that I would be teaching class on Zoom from that space <laughs> or her little meditation hut that's tented off on the side. Um, so I would say breakout spaces. Um, I myself have really enjoyed my bar. I converted an extra closet into a bar. <laughs> so I think that, you know, doing a bit more, you know, just entertaining yourself at home. Um, but I would say outdoor spaces has been the biggest. And we've had a lot of clients leaving the city um, because they want a yard, a place to, mm -hmm. for, their kid, for their kids to play and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Clutter about Bailey. Sorry. Yeah, for, same. It's outdoor um, spaces uh, or just like an intimate space where someone can gather. I've had, you know, those types of situations come up, but it's mostly the outdoor. Everyone saw my swing suite and I've gotten a lot of calls for people putting up swing suites in their backyard. Um, and if you haven't seen my Instagram page, it's you know, this kind of dinette, it's like a small little swinging dinette set. Um, and we've been putting some of those up. So those are great. And people have been loving those. Cloda? Yeah, we're doing, uh, we're doing a lot, actually. I converted a, a client's uh, Bayfury Parks' car that is in Miami into, into an outdoor deck. And we 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 actually turned one of our hotel. We turned the tennis courts into organic gardens with with gathering places within them. And you know, when homes and and now with with uh, we you we use infra infrared heating, you know, in in climate weather, covered spaces, but that you also can break out from. Mm -hmm. And always when we can, the sound of water, because mm -hmm. it it's, it water is so cleansing. So we we're kind of we're working with fountains. And, can, and by the way, sometimes dealing with leaks, but we're, <laughs> <laughs> but we love, we love water. And we, we love light coming from unseen sources in the garden. So the garden becomes magical. Mm. And we've also working on, um, I was up last weekend at a retreat for, for Tibet House and we're, we're doing um, chromotherapy places so that it'll be, so you do the red, you could do the red chakra. So you go to, a, there's going to be a garden that's all red. So it's intense, you know, and blue and so on and so forth. So walk, walk, walking through a big garden from chakra to chakra to animate yourself. Wow. And we're talking about doing air streams even before you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to see that. I know we're talking about it, you know. I was wow. thinking of doing a graffiti dare stream for somebody too. I love graffiti. Oh, I love graffiti. I, I mean, Basquiat is, is one of the loves of my life. I carry him with me. So we, we actually have people paint walls rather than hang paintings on the walls. Mm -hmm. We did a five-story um, amenities building in, in uh, Long Island City. And the whole stairwell is graffiti the whole way up. And we've hidden sayings in the, you know, in the graffiti. I love that. I love graffiti because it's, it's such energy and it's in a sense so ephemeral. It's, it's totally different, totally different energy than looking at an old master painting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Gosh, I, I'm, I'm very inspired. Um, you know, all your work that you're doing now, I'm just thinking like when, when you can travel, you know, how will that be once you can get on the, you know, get to places, go to Africa, go, you know, get your, your inspiration out of your places. That'll be a good time. 
Well, we, can draw, we can draw on our inner videos in the meantime of every trip we've ever taken. <laughs> right. Four pounds and a half. This is a brain and so much videos in there. So many videos. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I look at my iPhone and it brings me back to so many good memories. I know. You know? I know. It's, um, well, you three are amazing women and thank you. And I'm sorry for you as that I sort of screwed up on the Zoom um, thing, but we got it together. And, you got it uh, together. But and, got and it being, together. being a Libra, I thought it was me. You always blame yourself first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a Libra too. So I let. <laughs> oh, you're, you're, that's yeah. too funny. October 8th, what are you? <laughs> oh, that's a very special day for me. Um, I'm the 14th. Okay. <laughs> I'm the wow. 14th, but I love the 8th. Is there any, any other Libras in the house? I'm a Sag. I'm a Leo. Yeah. <laughs> Leo. Yeah. I know a lot of Leos. Oh, very good. Well, thank you all. You're amazing. And this conversation is not finished. And you've, you've really, you've inspired me to dig deeper. So thank you. Thank, thank you, Jane. This was so much thank fun. You. Thank you very, very for much. Sure. Thank you for joining. Thank you, Las Vegas Market. And um, toodles. Okay. Bye. Okay. <laughs> thank you, everybody.